I started out as a mathematician after studying music in high school. I, um, I took the course in fine arts and music. Uh, my violin teacher expected me to go on to the concert stage, but I couldn't quite see that. And um, I studied music, studied the violin from the time I was, as I've said, from the time I was six years old until I was at the university as an undergraduate. And I started there as a pre-medical student because of my father's wishes that um, he had had since he was in college. He had a, a roommate also from the Buffalo area and they agreed when they were college students that if they had daughters they would want them both to go into medicine. And uh, <laughs> since I loved math, I, um, I thought that the world of ophthalmology was probably where I would end up. But I fell in love with mathematics too much. And so I began teaching at the University of Buffalo. And um, then the war came along, and I remember so well hearing President Roosevelt um, give his talk on Pearl Harbor. And um, I decided then that I would like to be in the Navy, <clears throat> which had been traditional in my family. But then I had to wait for two years before I could join because at that time, this was in the early 40s, women had to be 21 years old before they, they knew their own minds, supposedly, and uh, they had to have parents' permission to join the military. Well, my father had died and my mother was a librarian at the university and I was pretty sure that she would not agree to my doing it because she had been very dependent on me. And um, so I had to wait until I was 21. I had started teaching at 19. I was in one of those accelerated programs where uh, I skipped a grade in grade school and was 16 when I graduated from high school and 19 when I graduated from the university. And creativity, I was living it, but it, it really never came into my mind. It wasn't at that time um, a household word as it finally became. And uh, I think it was my service in the Navy, as Dave has said, that I worked on the first computer at Harvard. I, was, I fought the Battle of Harvard Square for two years. And um, I worked with Commander Aiken, who was the inventor of the machine, which was 60 feet long. It wouldn't even have fit in this room. We were in a room in the basement of Croft Physics Lab at Harvard. And um, I think this experience had more influence on my going back to teaching. I already had a graduate degree in education in teaching math in higher ed, or in secondary ed at that time. My doctorate was in higher ed. And um, here I was stuck with a commanding officer who believed that colleges and universities were great places except for the students. 
and he, his philosophy was that um, if you knew your subject, you could teach it. Well, I didn't agree with him, and that's where creativity came into my life. It had been kind of fringe to it all the way through, but uh, that was where he convinced me that my place was back in education. And uh, that was pretty nearly the time that Jenny Graham, as the only person on the faculty at the university, would uh, chance something as strange as creativity. And Jenny, uh, in the Department of Retailing, invited Sid Parnes to leave his job in business to come to the university. And I will never forget the first class that I taught in retail at 235. And one of the prospective students came in and said he must be in the wrong room. And I said, how come? He said, well, I expected the instructor to be hanging from the chandelier or something strange like that since this is creativity. And I said, stick with us. You'll find that there's a lot more to creativity than have the instructors hanging off the chandeliers. So he continued with me for at least a semester and I think a full year and decided that, yes, there was more to it than met the eye. That was really how creativity began to be active. I realized that I was more of a people person than I was a machine person. And it was a wonderful position to be in to be working on the first large-scale computer. And I, I have to tell you something that happened there that made me realize that maybe my commanding officer wasn't totally off the wall uh, as far as education was concerned. They also had uh, a machine called the Differential Analyzer in those early 40s at MIT. The Army had that, and we had, in the Navy, we had the use of the Mark I computer. And the first time that I ever realized that maybe my commander had a sense of humor was one time that they asked us to loan some of our staff people to MIT. And my maiden name was Brendel. And he said, if they would make you a Jigadier Brendel, I would send you over to them. But he saw no reason for cooperation between the Army and the Navy. So that was the end of it. But we continued working and uh, they developed uh, a couple more machines, largely through the efforts of Grace Hopper, who later was one of the inventors of the COBOL language. So machines could talk to each other. And, uh, she later became a, a rear admiral. But I was glad to go back to teaching, which was my first love. Well, I don't think we recruited. Okay. I think the students came to us. Mm -hmm. And it became a question of whom we will accept. 
and um, who we want to work with. Um, we started an undergraduate program at the, the campus school here. I don't remember terribly much about what happened at, um, at the university, except that <laughs> I remember comments that people make. And we had a visitor from England, and he observed one of our, our um, brainstorming sessions. And he said, this is not true brainstorming. And I said, why isn't it? And he said, because you're having too much fun. <laughs> you're not supposed to have all, all this fun. And uh, between the building where our class was being held and the office, I convinced him that, I think I convinced him that um, brainstorming could be fun. Well, uh, most of the challenges came from the faculty, and I, I truly believe that they were jealous of our attempts to uh, start something new. I remember meeting with the curriculum committee when we were trying to get our master's program going. And I presume that you know that we graduated our first master's candidate in 1975. And we had been over here on this campus for about six years. And I met with the curriculum committee in trying to have some of our graduate programs put into effect. And, um, I was told, in essence, you have a lot of nerve to think that only two of you, and at that time it was just Sid and me, that um, we couldn't do the job. And we accepted the challenge. 